So what happens when a popular children's cartoon TV show transcends onto the big screen for a spectacular animated movie? Then you get 1986's Transformers movie. The movie that no doubt had many annoyed parents being dragged to the local movie theatre by their nagging kids to see the battle between the Autobots and Decepticons on a theatrical scale. For its time, it was shrugged off as just being a toy advert for kids, to hype them up to get the latest Transformers toys. But was this movie unfairly judged? After all, the movie features amazing animation, a kick-ass soundtrack, and bravely, or maybe foolishly, kills off memorable characters. So how does the Transformers movie hold up today? Yes, today we are talking about the Transformers movie. The movie that long predates the live-action Michael Bay movies. Only this movie doesn't have to include jokes about Shia LaBeouf playing with himself. By the way, just letting everyone know, I'm not an absolute Transformers fanatic. I mean, yeah, I watched it when I was a kid and I liked it, but I wasn't as fanatical with it as I was, say, the Ninja Turtles or Ghostbusters. But hey, I'll do my best. So, let's check it out. Number 10, Origins of the Transformers. The Transformers movie is in fact based off the Transformers animated TV series, duh, which focuses on giant sentient robot beings who can transform into vehicles and other objects, with two robot factions at war with each other. Those of course being the heroic Autobots and the sinister Decepticons. The Transformers brand is the creation of American toy company Hasbro and Japanese toy company Takara Tomy. Transformers itself is an amalgamation of two Japanese mecha toy brands, those being Diaclone and Microchange. Hasbro wanted to rebrand these toys for American children, so they combined the two brands into one to create the Transformers toy lineup, which thanks to its ability of having toy robots that can transform, proved to be very popular in toy markets, with its popularity being up there with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and G.I. Joe. When it came to coming up with a backstory of the Transformers, Marvel Comics were hired to create the mythology, even releasing a string of popular Transformers comic books. Marvel Productions even oversaw the animated series, which was first broadcast in 1984, which featured animation by Japanese animation studio Toei Animation. Transformers came out at just the right time, as in 1984 many restrictions were lifted that banned product advertising to be used in children's cartoons, so kids could watch the cartoons and be inspired to buy the toys and comics and other merchandise with Transformers becoming one of the biggest brands to come out of the 80s. And as of 2011, it was estimated that Transformers had generated more than $25 billion, making it one of the most financially successful brands of all time. Now, I've got to admit, I never really got into the Transformers toys. I got a couple of them, I tried to make them transform, but I think I found it just too complicated and too frustrating. But I can understand why many kids love the whole transforming toy aspect. And yeah, there's no doubt they were brilliant. They just weren't for me. Number nine, out with the old, in with the new. So with Transformers being a massive success among its child-aimed market, it seemed that the next big step was to make a Transformers animated movie. However, the plan was not so much to create a unique cinematic experience as it was to introduce new characters that were to be the main focus in the next animated season, and thus, to sell new toys. And that's kind of it. And in order to introduce these new characters, several well-established characters were killed off in the animated movie, including the ever-popular Optimus Prime, a move that Den of Geeks called, quote, the Great Toy Massacre of 1986. I love that line, I wish I created it, but I didn't. 
So yeah, I love this movie, especially its animation. But at the end of the day, this movie was about getting rid of the old toys and now showing off the newer toys in order to get kids to nag their parents into buying them. Number 8. The Transformers movie was part of a cinematic conversion with another popular cartoon. The Transformers movie was distributed by the Dino De Laurentiis Entertainment Group, which was a newly founded company, founded by movie producer Dino De Laurentiis, whom had made many movies since the 1940s, including Flash Gordon and Conan the Barbarian. The production company was newly formed at the time, but it was struggling with many financial difficulties. In fact, the Transformers movie was one of two movies that the Dino De Laurentiis Entertainment Group had produced at that time, which was based on a popular children's cartoon. The other one was the My Little Pony movie, which, like Transformers, was a Hasbro product. So we can conclude that Hasbro and the Dino De Laurentiis Entertainment Group had a multiple movie deal. In fact, the My Little Pony movie was the second movie the Dino De Laurentiis Group had produced, the first being Raw Deal. Yeah. The company went from Arnie to Ponies. The My Little Pony movie was released just two months before the Transformers movie, and the company had produced many other movies that very same year, including Maximum Overdrive, Manhunter, Blue Velvet, and the following year, the horror classic Evil Dead 2. Sadly, the company became defunct in the early 90s. It just couldn't keep up with its financial struggles. But at this time, there was actually quite a few cartoons that got their own movies, including the G.I. Joe animated movie, and the Thundercats animated movie, as well as the GoBots movie. Yeah, remember GoBots? They were kind of like Transformers, but weren't Transformers. Sort of like if you get Transformers off Wish. Okay, that's just a joke. I know that a lot of people actually did really love the GoBots. Number seven, original script idea. The script for the Transformers movie was written by Ron Friedman, who also wrote for the Transformers and G.I. Joe cartoons. He's actually written for many classic TV shows, including Bewitched, Happy Days, Starsky and Hutch, and Wonder Woman. However, at one stage, there was a script floating around, which would have focused on Optimus Prime going on a quest of self-discovery, to find out the origin of the Transformers race, in which their home planet itself would have turned out to be a giant Transformer robot. Now, some elements of this proposed script did make it into the final film, but by some claims, the creative process for writing this movie was a sporadic mad infusion of ideas, with several people chiming in with what they think the movie should or shouldn't have. Of course, there were several companies involved, each with their own ideas and investments, such as Marvel, Hasbro, Takara, and Toei Animation. It's even been suggested that the original ending was a lot more violent than the finished film. Hey, I'll be interested to see what that ending was. But despite all this, we did thankfully end up with a coherent story for the movie. Number 6. A Mad Rush to the Finish Line The Transformers movie was directed by Nelson Shin, who also directed episodes of the TV series. And for all those who need a geek out fix, he worked on the animation effects for the lightsabers in the original Star Wars movie. However, there were massive time deadlines and issues for Shin and his team to complete the movie, as on average, it'll take about three months to make one episode of the series, and the movie was 90 minutes long. Now, the production was given a budget of $6 million, but that still didn't soften the workload burden, as Shin and his team were working on the movie while also creating episodes for the TV show. So, yeah, as you can imagine, it would have been pretty flat out. The Toei vice president, Kozo Morishita, spent a year in America overseeing the movie. And according to good old Wikipedia, yeah, I know how much you guys love Wikipedia, it was he who insisted on giving many layers of shading and shadows to the animation. Which is why in the movie, the animation looks like it has more depth and a glossier, higher quality look. No matter what you think of the Transformers movie, you can't deny that the animation in the movie is simply gorgeous. Love it! Number 5. The Last Job for Two Great Legends The Transformers movie has a very impressive cast who lend their voices, including Peter Cullen and Frank Welker, who return as Optimus Prime and Megatron, as well as Leonard Nimoy, Robert Stack, Judd Nelson, and interestingly, Eric Idle. 
However, the Transformers movie marks the final performance from two movie legends. Those, of course, being Scatman Crothers, who I'll always remember as Dick Hollerum from The Shining, and Citizen Kane himself, Orson Welles. There are actually a lot of stories floating around about Wells' time working on the Transformers movie. Apparently, his voice recording really needed cleaning up, and to have enhancements made to it, as he was so weak and sick while recording his lines. Apparently, his voice recording was so bad it was nearly deemed unusable. But as mentioned, they were able to clean up his recording, and once again make enhancements. Wells was actually really happy to be a part of Transformers, explaining that he got to voice a toy who kills other toys, which he seemed to find exciting. And according to IMDB, while in the studio to record his lines, he demolished a buffet table. Yep, he was chowing away at the food, living his best life. <laughs> I don't know why that story makes me really happy, but it just does. But regardless, rest in peace to both Orson Welles and Scatman Crothers. They were both immensely talented actors of their time. Number 4. The Infamous S-Bomb So yeah, about that. We get to the infamous scene where we hear a cuss word in the Transformers movie. Oh shit, what are we gonna do now? It's as if the movie is trying to be edgy, like an edgy teenager or something. I mean, I don't think you'll hear that kind of language in the TV series. Now, children's cartoons using swear words isn't entirely a rare thing. After all, there is an old clip floating around of Porky Pig saying son of a bitch. You thought I was going to say son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> but it is still a rare thing to have happen, especially for an 80s cartoon. So why was the word added to the script? Was this a way to appeal to an older audience? Maybe as if to suggest the Transformers movie is less Saturday morning cartoon and more heavy metal? Well, it's been suggested on Reddit that adding the S-bomb was an attempt to get the Transformers movie a PG rating, rather than a G rating. As in the 80s, movies rated G weren't shown as much as movies with higher rating classifications. Now, I don't know if this is entirely correct, but if it is true that PG and higher ratings get more screen times in movie theatres, then I guess it would be in the Transformers production's best interest to strive for a PG rating. So, well... Bring on the shit. Oh shit, what are we gonna do now? On a side note, I've seen some people claim that they don't actually think the character says the S word, but actually says shoot. So what do you guys think? Number three, the soundtrack is truly awesome. Okay, now we get to a really strong aspect of the Transformers movie. It's soundtrack, which features several songs from popular artists of the time. Firstly, there's the movie's score, which was composed by Vince DiCola, who previously scored Rocky IV. And his score is truly amazing and epic, and has an out-of-this-world scope and scale. Not to mention, it's the most funkiest 80s soundtrack ever. Just listening to the score in the Transformers movie makes me want to do some aerobicizing. Yeah! The music, along with the animation, lets you know straight away that you're not watching a TV show, but something much more grander and epic. The movie also features a reworking of the Transformers theme by the rock band Lion, as well as the songs Hunger and Nothing's Gonna Stand In Our Way by the heavy metal band Spectre General. And it even features the Weird Al Yankovic song, Dare To Be Stupid. And yes, having a Weird Al song in an animated Transformers movie really does complete my life. But to me, the true showstopper of the soundtrack is the song The Touch by Stan Bush. Now, after the release of the movie, The Touch kind of became forgotten, but it was brought back into the mainstream 11 years later when it was featured in the movie Boogie Nights, where the song was sung by a really out of tune Mark Wahlberg. You got the touch. You got the power. The song was used for Boogie Nights as that movie's director, Paul Thomas Anderson, was a fan of the Transformers movie and the song. And the touch has been used in other movies and TV shows since. And it really generally is a truly brilliant song that has that 80s sound and kick and vibe that we all love. And interestingly, the touch was originally written to be used for the Sylvester Stallone movie, Cobra. But it didn't end up being used, so Transformers the movie it was. And the Transformers movie soundtrack in general has become a popular sought-after item by fans. As for the rock version of the Transformers theme by Lion, well, I would say I didn't like it, but 
I would be lying. <laughs> yeah, sorry, just a bit of humour there. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Number two, lost in a bombardment of cinematic hits. Yeah, when the Transformers movie was released, it was a massive flop. It opened up in the 14th spot in the box office, behind the Rob Lowe comedy About Last Night, which I'd never even heard of till now. It made somewhere between two to five million dollars, which is not good, considering the movie's six million dollar budget. Furthermore, the My Little Pony movie was also a flop, which all up caused Hasbro to lose 10 million dollars. Ah, yikes. And it certainly didn't help the Dino De Laurentiis Entertainment Group either. The critics certainly weren't kind to the movie. It was considered a loud, violent toy commercial for kids, of which parents aren't going to enjoy or be able to understand what's going on. Yeah, look, it seemed that the critics just weren't interested. They shrugged it off as being a silly movie made for kids, and there was no budging or wiggle room of that opinion. In other words, they didn't like it because, well, they didn't understand it. Something else that has been contributed to the Transformers movie's downfall is that it came out at the same time that many other popular movies came out, including Stand By Me, Aliens, The Karate Kid Part 2, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Short Circuit, The Fly, Labyrinth, and Big Trouble in Little China. Wow, no wonder the Transformers movie didn't stand a chance. I mean, I can't see the average moviegoer who isn't a Transformers fan saying, Puh, to hell with watching Aliens or Big Trouble in Little China. Nope, I'm watching that Transformers movie. Number one, Morning Optimus Prime. For its time, the Transformers movie was considered quite controversial with Transformers fans, and even caused great upset among child audiences for its killing of established characters, particularly Optimus Prime. It's said that Hasbro just wanted to get rid of older characters to bring in new ones, aka new toys, so it was more of a monetary move than a creative one. But they underestimated just how influential and important Optimus Prime was to the fandom. Supposedly, even scriptwriter Ron Friedman tried to advise Hasbro against killing off Optimus Prime, in that they'll be killing off the hand that feeds them, or as he called it, removing Daddy from the family. The shock death caused a flurry of angry letters, and on one occasion, one boy locked himself in his bedroom for a week. <laughs> I guess it hit him quite bad. As mentioned, they underestimated how iconic Optimus Prime is. They saw him as a toy. A mere product designed to take pocket money off kids and to bring in a cash flow, and that this was simply a case of getting the old product off the shelf and replacing it with a new, shinier, more expensive product. But the retaliation caused them to eventually revive Optimus Prime. As for the movie itself, well, in following years, the Transformers movie has become a cult movie, with its popularity increasing with the passing of time, with many special editions being released on home media, and it now has 62% on Rotten Tomatoes, with an audience rating of 88%. So the Transformers movie does have worth, and is something more special than just some fluff to keep the kids happy in 1986. Some have even suggested that this movie is better than the subsequent Michael Bay movies that followed 20 years later. So it may have been a movie that adults didn't understand and shrugged off when it first came out, but its increasing fan base and longevity proves that the Transformers movie is so much more than that. For the longest time, for old boys like me, the 1986 animated Transformers movie was the only Transformers movie that we had. I think this is definitely one for the Transformers fans. Once again, I really appreciate it for its glorious animation and its music. So this movie is a must for all Transformers enthusiasts. Anyway, I'm Minty, and long live Optimus Prime. See ya!